My message today is very simple. God opens doors. And uh, so don't let disappointment stop you from serving God, following the call He has for you, because opportunities and doors are in front of us. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you that over these next few moments we can just pause and uh, stop and listen to your word. Thank you, God, that you hear our prayer, you hear our cry. Lord, those things that are on our hearts, those things that are on our minds, Lord God, you, you hear those prayers. Those worries, those concerns for, for loved ones, Father God health issues, awaiting results of tests. Lord, you hear our prayers. Lord God, as a church, continue to strengthen us. Thank you for the faithful people before me today. Lord, open our hearts, open our ears, help us to hear again afresh your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, an unexpected road will lead you to where God needs you to be if you're willing to follow it. Have you ever noticed how you explain an event that has already happened? It's often much different than how we experienced it. You know that fish that got away? Hmm. Or oh, yes, it was that fish. And oh, it was hard, and this happened, and this thing happened, and then we went there, and we did that, and oh, well, you know, it all turned out for good, praise God. But while we're in the middle of it, while we're in that place, while we're in the middle of that circumstance, it's very hard. But while we're in the middle of that marriage breakup, or that uncertainty at work, or those medical treatments, you weren't quite sure how things were going to end up. We cannot see what we are experiencing in the middle of it, that it may actually work out. Or even how on earth is God going to get me through this? Or how is this going to be... <coughs> get through the <soon. laughs> I love that communion bread. <laughs> now we're going to preach. Cough it up alone. Or how this is at all part of his plan... But God needed to teach us something. But we cannot see the destiny in face of the disappointment. David, that young boy that would become king, is a good illustration of this, about how to deal with disappointment. David was more than just a shepherd boy, more than just that giant killer. He was to be the future king in training. And God is looking for a new king in Samuel 16, 1 Samuel 16. Saul didn't have the heart of a shepherd to lead the people. And God is looking for a man after his own heart. And we need to be people who are leading and shepherding and mentoring those that are coming behind us. 
So Samuel comes to Jesse's house. He had a number of sons and, and David was the youngest, if you know the story. And God told Samuel, the next king is in Jesse's house, but he didn't tell him which one. So it's a bit of a mystery. He has his horn of oil to anoint the next king already. And God, friends, at times will give us enough for the details to get you to the right place. But he still needs you and I to trust him with what's next. So Samuel the prophet faithfully goes to Jesse's house. He gives us, you and I, enough light for the next step, the next thing, for the next place to go. And God guides us along the path. But sometimes he doesn't give us all the details. And so we arrive at 1 Samuel 16, verse 8 to 11. We're lining all these excellent looking young men up. The sons of Jesse. Then Jesse called Adimadab and had him come pass in front of Samuel up there on the screen for you. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. You can imagine the sons, can't you? <laughs> Here we go! <laughs> it wasn't you, it might be me. No, it's not me either. And so, but I'm the good looking one. I'm the tall one. I'm the one with the cool beard and the long hair. The Lord had not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Samuel knows he's got the right place, the right time, the right location, the right family. There is still the youngest. Jesse answered, he's tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him, we'll not sit down until he arrives. I love this about God, don't you? That, that he selects what man rejects. He uses the weak things of the world to confound the wise. Any more sons? Jesse doesn't even have the common courtesy to mention the boy looking after the sheep by name. There is still the youngest. He's looking after the sheep. The world loves to label us by our education or not. How we look, where we grew up, what job we have. Better go and get old sheep, boy. The one they didn't even think of bringing into the room was the one that God had chosen from the start. You cannot disappoint what God has appointed. When God calls your name, when he gets you ready, rise. It's your turn. Get up. When God gets ready to move you forward, when God gets ready to stir up your gifts and passions, things and desires in your heart that he has planted, when God gets ready to call your name, be ready. God knew where David was. He didn't need him in the lineup for this opportunity or for this opportunity that was about to come his way. He was faithfully caring for the sheep. God will use us right where we are. Right where we are today. Don't worry if you feel you've been overlooked or they didn't get your name right. God has got it. God has got it in hand. It's all right. He matters. He matters to me and he matters to you. And he knows the plans and purposes for you. If David hadn't been in the field caring for the sheep, he would not have been prepared to lead people 
as king. What seemed insignificant to him was just what he needed for his future role and call and assignment that God had planned all along. What about you? Can you see God's hand at work? Can you see how he's used insignificant moments in your life? To equip you for a future task that God knew about all along. We were frustrated. We were bored. We were confused. We were annoyed. But God knew best and he knew it was our turn. And it was coming. Just up ahead. No doubt if you're like me after... David is anointed as king. We often think life should change. In 1 Samuel 16, 12 and 13. So he sent for him and brought him in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. The Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. I just had all these other sons pass by who you thought might be king, but no, it's the boy coming from the field who looked after the sheep. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. I love that. Be like Joseph. And from the day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Now, no doubt, if you're like me, you'd expect a nice big gold chariot to arrive and young David hop in the chariot and off they would go. And he would get a new wardrobe and off to the king's court and off to how to be a king's school. I don't know. Maybe you're not like me at all. But no. We get confused when God says it's your turn, but he makes us wait. Who hates that? God makes us wait because we need to still learn some things and have some wins and have some fails and have some triumphs and have some discouragement because he still needs to teach us a few things. It was on this day that he was anointed to be king, but it would be many years later that he actually wore the crown. You know when you give your life to Jesus, in that moment, you are saved, forgiven, redeemed. All these things become true immediately. But over time, God redeems us. Over time, God refines us. Over time, God gradually works on me and you. His redemptive work that is taking place. Don't get disappointed or distracted. Don't get off course and miss your time and your turn. David went back and looked after the sheep. We love messages. We love the story of David. We love the giant and the shepherd boy. We've all, we all need to beat those giants in our life. But if we go over to just down the page in, in Samuel 17, he's still the shepherd boy. And his dad says to him, nice he used his name, now Jesse said to his son David, take this ephod of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. And David could have said, who on earth do you think you are? Didn't you hear what Samuel said a few days ago? I am the Lord's anointed. I'm going to be the new king. I'm a man of prestige and purpose and potential. I don't have time to be running off to my brothers with grain and bread and, and cheese and caring for them. These same brothers who left me out in the field and didn't call me in when Samuel came to anoint me as king. Who on earth do you think I am? But he didn't. 
Friends, this is the test. You see, will we do the basic things that God calls us to do? Have a humble heart. Serve one another. Like David did, humbly served his brothers, went to his brothers, obeyed his father. Some of us just want to, to do the big things for God, the cool things, the impressive, showy things. But God says, serve faithfully. Do the basic things for God. If you want to see a big victory, follow simple instructions. Some of us must tend the sheep first. Some of us must care for our brothers and sisters before we beat the giant, before we truly fulfill his plans and promises and wear that crown. Start with the simple things and he'll open doors of opportunity for greater things. Faithfully follow, faithfully serve, faithfully hear his call. I think it was on Friday I, I saw this image. I thought you'd enjoy it. But when God puts a calling on our lives, he has already factored in our foolishness. Anybody? Anyone? Yes. He's already factored it in. He knows we'll fail. Yeah. He knows we might stumble. But he knows that we will faithfully follow. And as we faithfully follow and faithfully serve, he will open doors for greater opportunity. And that is our testimony. And that is the word to us today because we've seen that here in this place. God bless you. Amen.